Bradley and Ashley, we just heard a reading from scripture that affirms to us that marriage is God's idea. And first and foremost, it is a spiritual covenant. Most definitely, as we stand here today, we stand before the courts of two worlds. We stand before the throne of heaven, and we stand before the civil court of our land. You are about to enter into a legal contract or covenant that will be affirmed by both worlds. This is a serious and sovereign matter. This is why we have taken time be before this moment to meet together and make certain that you are prepared and ready for this amazing, this most sovereign moment. Beyond the time that you made Jesus Christ as your Lord of your life, this is the most important decision either of you will ever make. You are choosing to become one flesh, joined together, your lives and destinies. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, you made a profession of faith. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. That's what you did when you were born again. You are about to make another public profession of faith. In a few moments, I will leave you in an exchange of vows. Those vows are just as powerful and binding as the vow you made when you received Jesus. God will honor those vows the same way He honored the vow you made when you joined yourself to Jesus as your Lord. In this testament, the fifth chapter of Ephesians 31, we are reminded that a man is to leave his father and mother and become one flesh with his wife. This is a reference to Genesis 2, 24. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Let's talk more about this. Leaving. If your marriage is going to be what it ought to be, there has to be a leaving. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. Now, that is not a reference to abandon or forsake your parents. We know from other scriptures that we must always honor them. But what that means is that what you, when you establish your new home, you are to loosen your dependency on mom and dad. What this means is that you are to sever the emotional umbilical cord whether it is emotional dependency or even a financial dependency, a physical dependency, you are to leave them. The principle of this living is this, nothing, absolutely nothing on earth is to take precedence over your relationship with your mate. And when it does, you are in a clear violation of the first fundamental priority of marriage. That leads us to the second principle. Cleaving. If your marriage is going to be what it ought to be, there also has to be a cleaving. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. The old King James Version put it like this, he shall cleave unto his wife. Now, let me, let's make it absolutely clear that this has nothing to do with a meat cleaver. <laughs> the word cleave means to cling or glue to something, to keep close to something and remain bonded to it. In other words, remain faithful. The force of meaning in the word cleave can be more clearly understood 
when we consider how the Holy Spirit is used that in the Word of God. Let me give you several examples. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve Him and cling to Him. Deuteronomy 10 20. To love the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways and hold fast or cling to Him. Deuteronomy 11 22. You shall follow the Lord your God and fear Him and serve Him and cling to Him. Deuteronomy 13 4. Last but not least, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying His voice, and by holding fast to Him, or cling to Him, for this is your life. Deuteronomy 30, 20. This indicates that in the eyes of God, cleaving means wholehearted commitment. First of all, spiritual, but flowing over into every area of our being. So that the cleaving is also intellectual, emotional, and physical. Man is spirit, soul, and body. Weeping. Finally, if your marriage is going to be what it ought to be, there has to be a weeping. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Note what it says, they become one flesh. In other words, they weave themselves into each other's life. And that's a process, not an instantaneous event. One flesh doesn't just happen when you hear the word, I now pronounce you husband and wife. It doesn't happen when you sign the legal document. It doesn't happen during the honeymoon. It is a lifelong process. And it is built on the two previous principles. principles. Let me remind you of the elements necessary for weaving two lives together. A vow. And only when you make a covenant vow to cleave unto your wife will you be willing to so, will you be willing to so blend your heart with hers that you become, in every sense of the word, a team. Time. As you make room in your life for each other, the weeping happens. Hard work. Marriage is hard work. The hardest path you will ever attempt. Forgiveness. You will be hurt. You will be disappointed and offended by your mate. And the only way you can recover is to commit now to granting forgiveness. There are 12 words that will keep any marriage together. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. And those words must be spoken often in marriage. Avoid criticism. Now, you don't have to be a football fan to know this very important principle. You do not tackle the guy who wears the same color of uniform. <coughs> Listen, your spouse is your mate. Easy on the criticism. Prayer. 